to come up here sweetie <laughs> it's good to see you <laughs> all right well this this closes up uh, my my course on this uh, I cut it short because I wanted to take the next two weeks and give you guys opportunity to share all right so you're each going to have about uh, 10 to 15 minutes to share the revelation of the something that's helped you something that's brought increase in your life I you know I'd like it to be something that you've gleaned from the course of the Bible school or some of the literature, the books you've read, or something maybe the Lord spoke to you when you were cutting grass. I don't know, something. All right. But, but what, what really helped and changed you and helped you to go higher or deeper in your relationship with the Lord or to bring increase of his presence upon your life? So I want it to be real. I want it to be genuine. I, you know, I, I expect to hear scriptures, I ex- but I also expect to hear how it changed your life by the spirit of wisdom and revelation of what he showed you, what he revealed to you. And if it's maybe some things, you know, in some of your lives, uh, I think about you, Bruce, you've, been, you, this, you've taken numerous Bible school courses, if I remember right. But if it's something maybe it went dormant in your life and all of a sudden it got refreshed, you know, if there's something like that, uh, you know, don't, I don't want you to be limited. I want you to speak from your hearts. I want you to be able to give that out uh, because I believe that what God has helped you with, he can help us with. You understand me? In other words, I'm expecting to be touched by what God has touched you with in those two weeks. So that, that'll be next Thursday night. All right, and if we run through it, all right, and it happens to go quickly, which I don't know, maybe it will, because I know some of the folks are out of town. Uh, If that happens, maybe the following Thursday, if we do it in one Thursday, maybe we'll take a road trip and go up and listen to the folks up up at Salt Church and find out what, what God's telling them, all right? So if that happens to be the case, we'll know next Thursday. Like if we have to go a little longer next Thursday, maybe to fit you all in, uh, I'm willing to do so if you're willing to do so. And then uh, maybe we could plan a road trip and uh, we could go up there and party. All right? Would that be all right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, I, I was, uh, that song, Dan, I thought I, I appreciate you being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I, uh, I, I'm so grateful for you back there on the camera. <laughs> Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. I had gotten an email from a apostle friend of mine. His name is Dale Armstrong. Some of you know him. He just put out a, a prayer request for the Ukraine and the Ukrainian brothers. There's, there's certainly a lot of turmoil going there. A lot of Christians are being persecuted. Uh, uh, people were having to flee from one region uh, to get into other regions. Uh, uh, there's a need for food. There's a need for housing. I mean, multitudes of people were leaving certain communities that are being attacked uh, by war. And uh, so please, uh, you know, in your prayer time, please keep the Ukrainian church, especially the church there, in prayer, but also the nation. That nation has gone through some extreme changes in the last 15, 20 years. But there's been a powerful move of God. There's some strong believers there. But, uh, you know, there's uh, just a lot of turmoil. You know, we certainly live in the last days. You know, we hear about wars or rumors of wars. Well, it's happening. It's been happening. But uh, you guys are last-day warriors as far as I'm concerned, and I'm just blessed to be a part of your lives. Did you find First Thessalonians chapter 3? Well, I'm glad you did because I haven't got there yet. All right. <laughs> let's uh, let's look at verse twelve. The apostle Paul, as he was writing to the church here, he says, "And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love." 
one towards another and towards all men. That pretty well covers it, doesn't it? That covers inside the church and outside the church, all right? Even as we do towards you, to this end he may establish you or establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even the Father, at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Now go with me to uh, Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. The prayer the Apostle Paul was praying here for the church. In verse 9, chapter 1, verse 9. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Now the heartbeat here in both of these passages, is that you would abound, that your love would abound more and more, that you would increase in the knowledge of the love of God. When we read the word knowledge, I don't want you to just think about uh, mental knowledge. I want you to understand that there's a knowledge that comes through a life that's lived out in intimacy with the Lord that you can know him, you understand me? We can know about him, but it's more important that we know him. And if we're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, we need to know our leader. We need to know how we can be led by the Holy Spirit by knowing God. Because, see, God will never lead you outside of love. I want you to remember that. This is one of the foundational truths with being led by the Holy Spirit in every one of our lives. A lot of times people think, well, I'm being led by the Holy Spirit, but they're not walking in love. Well, I have to question that. And in my own life, I'd have to question that. If, if I'm not, whatever I'm doing, if I'm not doing it in love and for love's sake, then I'm wrong. You hear me? Just better preaching. You guys are shouting tonight there, Kyle. Amen. <laughs> All right. Now, go with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 3. This is a very familiar passage with you. I just want to set a little bit of groundwork here before we get into this tonight. The Apostle Paul praying here for the church at Ephesus. Verse 14, he says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you be rooted and grounded in, does your Bible say love? God wants you and me rooted and grounded in love. You may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, Now, the four dimensions, the length, the depth, and the height. These are the four dimensions of life. These are the four dimensions of the love of God as well. And to know the love of Christ. Now, remember this. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. That's where you, and the only thing you can say when the love of God is revealed to you in such an intimate way, all you can usually say is, wow. You understand me? Because there's no words that can explain the depths of his love, the length of his love, the breadth of his love. Now, look at this. That's why you want to talk in tongues, guys. Do you hear me? (laughs) All right, man. (laughs) There's a vocabulary there that talks the love language, okay? Okay. He says, and to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, is God love? Is he? Do you know him as a loving God? Okay, he says he wants you and me in this prayer to be filled with the fullness of God. 
So could I say this, that you would be filled with the fullness of love? Think about it. Are we filled with the fullness of love itself? Well, if you're not certain on that, I want you to check out 1 Corinthians. You don't have to go there. This is an assignment for you the rest of your life, all right? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8a, all right? It explains the love of God. It breaks it down. And probably one of the better translations I would encourage you with would be the Amplified Translation. And to know that that love is in your heart, that that's who you are, as he is. So are you in this world. God is love. But he wants you and me to maintain a life that is so filled with his love. And I guarantee you, if you will learn how to bring your life under the control of the Holy Spirit and allow the love of God to flow, being led by the Holy Spirit will not be a chore to you. It will absolutely just be the way life is. You understand me. You will hear him. You will be sensitive to him. You will know the voice of your master. All right, you won't be deceived. But see, so often when we get deceived is when we fall out of love, when we get offended, when we get in unforgiveness. All right, when, when somebody says something against you or somebody does something to you and you take it, and it devastates you to the place where you fall out of love because why? You might as well just kill them. You understand? I know I'm the only one in here. So everyone just, you know, shoot somebody. All right. You guys are all perfect. All right. <laughs> I got flesh too, gentlemen. All right. <laughs> but then you got to fall back into love. All right. So to be filled with the fullness of God or to be filled with the fullness of love. Now, this is an everyday a venture for every one of us, that God fill me with your Holy Spirit. You know, being baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues happens as a one-time experience, but there are continual feelings of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians to be being filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, singing and making melody in your hearts unto the Lord. So if you've lost your song, then you have probably are not full, all right? In other words, there ought to be a song in your heart, and that song ought to be filled with love language, all right? Who are you in love with? You're in love with him. Is he your first love? Because if he's not your first love, then you're in trouble, amen? If you've got other things in front of your relationship with Jesus Christ, then you're headed down the wrong road. And for you to think that you're going to be controlled and led by the Holy Spirit, you are subject to error. So you've got to keep your priorities straight, and that's first, seek first the kingdom of God and his way of doing things, all right? All the rest of the stuff will come. Just keep yourself in a place of love to him, all right, and love for people. And in doing that, you're going to find that being led by the Holy Spirit is not a chore. You know, it's, it's a pleasure, and it will become simple to you. Now, go with me. Well, I'm going to read this, you guys. This has been our text here. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's Romans chapter 8, verse 14. That was part of your memory work, all right? Y'all memorize that? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> this is my last night, guys. I've got to see if you're getting anything. <laughs> That's all right. In John chapter 6, go, go, let's go to John 6, okay? You're going to get hit with a lot of Scripture tonight, okay, because I'm trying to condense some things. John 6, verse 63. It is the Spirit. Now, who we want to be led by? We want to be led by the Holy Ghost, right, the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit that quickeneth or makes alive. The flesh profiteth nothing. Now, don't ever forget that. When you're operating and working in the flesh, it's of little value or none. It doesn't profit. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, in this truth where Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spiritual words and they are life. You know that you cannot separate the Holy Spirit from the Word of God. You know that the two are in absolute total agreement. If we want to be led by the Holy Spirit, we must be led by love. 
one of the keys. But you also must understand that his words are spirit and they are life. That you can be led because the word of God becomes alive in you. You become sensitive to the word of God because it is their spiritual words. And you can be led by the spirit of the word. Can you say amen to that? In other words, when you know to do good and you don't do it, to you it will be sin. All right? When you know to forgive and you don't do it, to you it will be sin. Okay? But for you to know, to forgive, and you do do it, you're being led by the Holy Spirit to forgive. Do you see that? In other words, when you know to do good to people that that mess with you, you're led by the Holy Spirit. When you know that you're supposed to pray always, (laughs) well, then you're being led by the Holy Spirit. When you know that you're supposed to give, all right, and help humanity, then you're being led by the Holy Spirit. Now, you're going to have to become sensitive to the timing and the hows, but when you're doing the Word, when you're operating in the truths of the Word, and you're doing it in, in recognition with your spirit as a witness, do you ever, do you ever see, here, here's a good example. Have you ever had a need presented to you and you wanted to help? Have you ever had a need presented to you and you knew you weren't supposed to help? Yeah. Because, see, if you've got to recognize this, guys, because I want you to be led by the Holy Spirit in your giving. There are times that God is not wanting you to give into a need, and you can be led by the Holy Spirit that way because every need is not your responsibility to fill. It's God's responsibility. But if he chooses you, then you better obey him and do what he's asking you to do if you want the blessing of the Lord. So, example, when you are ministering to people that are manipulators and users, you better be sensitive to the Holy Ghost because the money you have in your pocket, whether you want to know it or not, is not yours. It's God's. If, if Jesus is really the Lord of your life, then you have to understand he has ownership of you. So therefore, whatever you own, he owns. And if you're giving away his stuff and he's not directing you to do so, then you are headed down the wrong road, all right? I'm trying to help you because I want you to see that you can become sensitive to the Holy Spirit in all that you do. Now, we're called to give, all right? We're called to tithe. There are certain principles you don't have to wait for a word from the Lord to, to do, but there are times when it comes to, to giving to the needs of humanity, all right, and especially when you're dealing with, uh, you know, one, one of the big ones, I, I had to learn some lessons dealing with street people when I was in Southern California. I mean, you know, I wanted to help humanity, man. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to do everything I could do. But I was limited in my resources. I didn't have you know, a bunch of stuff to be able to give them or a bunch of money at the time. But I wanted to, but I I found, I learned some things from my spiritual mom, and she taught me how to become sensitive to the Holy Spirit in what I did for them. You know, you, you could meet two poor people, and God wants you to empty your pocket to the one, and the other one, he wants you to just shake his hand, hug him, and offer offer him to be saved. See, guys, not every situation that you deal with is always the same. And that's where the love of God, all right, in your heart wants to give. But also, the Spirit of God wants to control you in the way you do it. Does that make sense to you? Now, let's go back here. Let's go back in, uh, in John 6. It says, It is the Spirit that quickeneth or makes alive. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, do you know that his sheep hear his voice? So in other words, have you ever heard the Lord speak to your heart? You just you, you just know it was him? Well understand, he's speaking to you into your spirit. All right. It's you know, don't if you try to wrestle and figure it out in your head, he's he's not speaking to your emotions, all right, he's not speaking to your flesh, he's speaking to your spirit. Well, he's speaking spiritual words to a spiritual person, 
and you've got to understand and divide, or rightly understand it by the Spirit. And that's where you rely on the Holy Spirit to, to show you what to do with the words that he are, He's speaking to you. When he tells you, you know, you go over to your neighbors and, and, and buy them a sack of groceries, well, is that God? I don't think the devil's going to tell you to do that, is he? Or is it your flesh knowing that they have a need and you just want to help them? And there's nothing wrong with that, guys. I'm not, you know, but how much better is it to do when it's being led by the Holy Spirit and you get the benefits of God on it? In other words, he might want you to help and contribute into that need, but you know sometimes he has timing. He has timing when he wants you to show up and be able to bless them. And he has other timing when it's not right for you so that you could, and if you miss his timing, you're not truly being led by the Holy Spirit. All right? You can do the right thing in the right spirit at the wrong time and miss what God wants you to do. Or you can be in the right place at the right time, being led by the Holy Ghost, doing it precisely under the direction of him, and you could get amazing results. See, that's when miracles happen. That's when you get manifestations of heaven upon earth that are just absolutely, you know, bring you into that wow factor. All right, that's God. You understand me? You know, and you, all you could do is sit there and go, wow, thank you, Jesus. And he gets, he, you get to be used by him because why? You've become sensitive to his leadership, to his direction, and also his timing. Remember, there's times, you ever, hear, you ever hear there's a word in season? How many of you ever heard a scripture, maybe heard a message, you know, just, you know what, it was okay, but it just didn't do nothing to you? How many, again, have heard that maybe a similar message, similar word, but it was like, wow, change my life? Why? Because there was a season that your heart was open to receive that word that was given, and that word was full of the life of God at that time in your life. Well, how much more? You know, you can, you can here's a good one for you guys, because I know you all have friends, and sometimes your friends aren't always doing the right thing, all right? And you love your friends. I know you do. I love my friends, all right? And if I can help them, I want to. Sometimes you know they're up to no good and you need to stop them before they hurt themselves, all right? But do you know that you can try to bring correction to them at the wrong time and you'll end up losing a friend? But do you know that you can be led by the Holy Ghost and bring the same correction to them and absolutely rescue a friend? Can you say amen to this? All right, I hope you do because I want you to get it, guys. You, I want you to hit the nail on the head because you become so sensitive to the Holy Spirit in your ministry and in your interaction with, 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 with people. You understand? It doesn't necessarily have to be from a platform to a pew. But God wants you and me to be led by the Holy Spirit 24-7 every day. Let's go, let's go with me to 1 John chapter 4. I want to make this statement to you because it's so true, and this comes with the general leadership or guidance of the Spirit of God. To walk or to live outside of love is to walk or live in disobedience to His Word. So if you're in disobedience to His Word, and you think you're being led by the Holy Ghost, then you are deceived. Let's prove it, all right? 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. Remember, we prayed a prayer, or Paul was pray, praying a prayer in Ephesians, that we would be filled with the fullness of God, or the, the fullness of his love, because God is love. He that knoweth, or he that loveth not, knoweth not God. Now, as we look at this, I, I want to bring this into the context of its setting. Because this, uh, the epistle or here of John, I encourage you to read it and read it and read it and read it. Because it will help you in your love walk. In uh, chapter 4 again. Let's, let's jump into 
Oh, verse 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. <clears throat> For we are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever noticed that there, there's unbelievers, maybe you have unbelieving friends, and you can't communicate with them on the same level that you communicate with each other on? It says, Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Now think about this. He that loveth not knoweth not God. Have you ever fallen out of love? I think we'd be lying to each other if we said, no, we haven't. We've, we've all slipped, all right? We've all missed the mark. Well, the thing to do is you make a decision, you get back into love. And remember, if you and I want to be led by the Holy Spirit, we must maintain this love walk. In uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, go there. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwells or lives in God or lives in love dwells in God. Oh, I want to be led by the Holy Ghost. I want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Do you see this truth, guys? I, I want you to see it because it's so simple and I think we've complicated it. And he that dwells or lives in love dwells in God and God in him. Do you want to be God-led, <laughs> spirit-led? Do you want to be underneath the control of the Almighty? Do you want to live underneath the shadow of the Almighty? Well, the biggest key is you dwell in love. Now, go to Second John. Second John, verse 5. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I had wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which was from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. Hmm. So what is love? That you walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. Does God want you to walk in love? Does he want you to walk in the Word? Do you want to be led by the Holy Spirit? Then you will walk in the Word, and you will walk in love. The two main keys here. Go to Mark's Gospel, chapter 12. Mark's Gospel, chapter 12. Look at verse 30 and 31 with me. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with half of thy heart. Does your Bible say that? Three quarters? <laughs> How much? <laughs> All! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have you... Now, let me ask you guys a question, all right? I want to be real with you tonight. Have you ever done something half-hearted for God? Yeah. You know, we'd be lying if we said, no, I've never done that. Yeah, you have. <laughs> it's like, you, you know what I mean? You have just a piece of your heart. Oh, I'll do this. I don't want to, but I will anyhow. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like helping somebody when you don't want to. It's like you can, you can change your want to. You understand me? I encourage you with all my heart. He says here, he says, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. All right? And then he doesn't stop there. All right? And with all thy soul. Now, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Okay? You're thinking. <laughs> you know, get rid of the stinking thinking. Okay? He says, and with all thy mind. 
So here he's he's nailing you twice here. Your soul, your mind, and then with all your strength. So all your heart, all your soul, your feelings, your emotions. Oh, I'm just going to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Did I engage my soul in praising the Lord? No. Nope. Uh, about about half soul. <laughs> All right. not, maybe not even half, maybe a quarter soul. All right. I don't know about you guys. I, I'm not black. You might not have noticed that. But I got I got black blood in me. I know I do. All right. Because there's I got a dance in me. You understand me? <laughs> I, I got a shout in me. All right. I got a hallelujah in me. All right. There's there's a soul man in here that likes to express his love his love language to the Father to the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's times that I know I hold it back. I know you guys are perfect. I understand that. I I'm, I'm learning from all of you. All right. But there's times that we do not release our soul in our romance, in our love, in our praise, in our worship to God. I guarantee you there will be breakthrough in your life if you'll start doing it. If you will start allowing your love language to be expressed to Him outside of the box of where you've been, all right, and you know, my, you might be—I mean, you might be ecstatic, but I guarantee you, there's there's a soul man in you. There's a song in you that needs to be sung to him. It doesn't have to be done in public, but there's a, a quiet place that God wants you to release the love that you have in your soul for Him, the love that you have in your mind for Him, the love that you have in your heart for Him, and and to express that in the strength that you have. He says here, he says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Do you remember what love was up in verse 6 of John chapter, or 2 John chapter 1, verse 2? And this is love that we walk after his commandments. And Jesus said, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is namely this, thou shalt love thy who? Now, who is your neighbor? <laughs> Everybody but you. <laughs> That's good, Joe. You, got, you, you hit that spot on. <laughs> thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all how much is all? Oh, yeah, if you figured that out yet, okay. So all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, which is the first commandment. The second, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, let me ask you something. If you love God, you'll love what he loves. So if you have self-hatred, you don't love God. I'm telling you, it's time to repent. You understand? When you don't love yourself, you best repent and ask God to forgive you because He loves you. And what gives you the right not to love yourself? How can you love somebody else if you haven't found out that you're totally accepted, totally loved, and that you have love for God and because of that, you can love yourself because he first loved you. Do you know that you're worthy to be loved because he said so? <laughs> and there's not a one of us in here that haven't done things that probably grieved him, that hurt him, but his love never quit on you. Can you say amen to that? He says here, Thou shalt love, the, love thy neighbor as thyself. There is, <clears throat> there is no other commandment greater than these. Go with me to John's Gospel, chapter 13. How many of you understand that if you want to be a disciple, a word disciple, 
of Jesus is really a follower of Jesus, a follower of his teachings. It's also another definition you'll find it's a disciplined one, one who is disciplined to follow the lead of another. If we're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, then we certainly will be disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ because his Spirit and the Lord are in total agreement. In, in uh, John chapter 13, so to be a true disciple, we have to understand that we will be led by love. A new commandment I give unto you, verse 34, John 13, that you love one another, how? As I have loved you. Kyle, I'm going to pick on you tonight. You look too comfortable, all right? How much does God love you? How do you know that? Because the Word says so. But have you experienced His love? Okay. How has, you know, I, I'm going to get nosy with you, man, all right? How, how have... How has he, you know, throughout your life, you've been a believer for quite a few years, I believe. How, how has he expressed his love for you that, this, that was real? You know what I mean? It was like, that wasn't human. <laughs> you, you understand me? So you found out that his word was alive. His word was spirit, and it was alive, all right? Because when he spoke, spirit to spirit, okay, everything changed. Yeah. yeah. So when he spoke that, and do you know there's scripture that says God loves you? <laughs> all right. <laughs> And I, I want you to understand that the Scripture, the Holy Spirit, the Lord God, the Father, they're all in total agreement. So God loves you. And that broke depression. Is that right? All right. So one way that God shows his love to us is by his, him verbally, or, you know, you, you just speaks to your spirit. You just know it's him. Because why? It's different. You know, I can say, Kyle, I love you, man. You understand? I might not do a thing for you, all right? <laughs> but I do, all right? <laughs> but it's another thing when Daddy God releases a word to your heart. I love you. Dustin, how about you? How... <laughs> yeah, you pretty well nailed it there. Uh, unconditionally. Amen. He does. Joe? So you, you know that that's the love of God flowing through you? Yeah. Yes. You, you can. You can feel. See, you can feel it in your soul, guys. I want you to know that. I, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to teach that you need to be led by feelings. But when you fall in love with him, with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength, 
you will have some strange feelings, all right? You understand me? You will get words that are like, wow. I mean, so you can express your love to him. So there's feelings that come when God flows through you to help and love people because, you know, God still loves people. <laughs> Amen. Eric, how about you? <laughs> I know he does, too. <laughs> Have you ever gone through, is there something that, that, that shifted maybe in your life that where it just become real to you? Is some, an event or something that he said to you or maybe just the, how he expressed his love to you? Okay. So his presence is a way that he expresses his love to you. Is that what you'd say? How about you, Luke? You just know he loves you. Amen. You know and you're knower. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yes, you do. I know. I can see it on your face, Luke. I can. How about you, Bruce? Right. So l let me get this right. You've experienced the love of God. One of them was through Pastor Richard who called you and ministered to you or prayed with you or whatever. And then through the word that was being taught through, through Pastor Robert or whatever. But then a demonstration of that was you giving, helping, blessing somebody else. So, amen. Well, Norma Jean, I can't not pick on you way back there, girl. How? You know, I mean, you're just so full of love of God. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So I could say this, I think, that through answered prayer, things changing. He's showing you how much he loves you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. That's good, kiddo. <laughs> well, he's a miracle guy, God, girl. He really is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amen. Well, in uh, back back in John thirteen, it says, "A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. That you also love one another." Now, think about. Flip, flip with me. I want you to see this scripture, guys. I. I'm trying to go slower tonight. I I got a lot on my heart, but I I I I know that this is a walk. This isn't a formula. <laughs> you understand? In other words, every one of us can receive his love maybe in different ways. But the more you receive, the more you're able to give. You understand me? See if you don't receive, you have nothing to give. But once you receive, understand, you will become a river, <laughs> a living spring, a, a well, all right, that will flow out of you. Does that make sense to you? In other words, if there's nothing coming in, there's probably nothing going out, all right? But a lot of people, there'll be a lot coming in, and they don't let it go out, and basically they end up becoming like cesspools, <laughs> So the key is keep it coming in and keep it coming out. Keep 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 this going on, your love walk with the Lord, and keep this going on, and I guarantee you, you'll grow, and you'll grow, and you'll grow, and you'll become more sensitive and more led by the Holy Spirit all the time and demonstrating his love. In John 15, look with me to, uh, oh, wow, it's all good. Look at verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. Now, think about this. Look at verse 14. You are my friends. So that means he's already laid down his life for you. Is that right? Now, he's asking us to do the same that he has done, and that's to lay down our lives for others. If you do whatsoever, I command you. You are my friends if you do what I ask you to do, but the thing he's asking you and me to do is to love the way he loves us. And the way he loves us is he laid down his life for us. Do you know when you lay down your life for somebody else, it eliminates selfishness? You know, when you're selfish, you will not be operating in a very high level of love at all. Because <laughs> it's all about you, and it's not about anybody else. I know none of you folks here are selfish. Say amen. <laughs> but it is, it is something we have to resist, guys, because we all have flesh, and we all can become self-centered. Look with me to John 14, verse 21. Well, you know what? Jump back up to 13. Verse 35. By this you shall know, or by, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have one for another. So if you have love one for another, 
then men will know that you're a disciple of Jesus Christ. They will know us by the way we love one another. So there's something about love in the family of God that has an expression that will speak to people that are not in the family of God. Do you know religion doesn't have that? Religion does not have the genuine and the true. But guys, you do. If you're born again, the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. You have the ability to love one another the same way Jesus Christ loved you. And you have the ability to love people the way Jesus loves people. Don't limit your potential to release the love of God that he has in your heart. That's when you can turn the other cheek. That's when you can forgive when nobody else can. That's when you can go the extra mile when everybody else has quit. Go with me to John 14, verse 21. He that hath my commandments. Now here, I, wanna, I want you to look in these, this passage of Scripture. We talk a lot about his presence, okay? And I love the presence of the Lord. I, I, I want to live in his presence. You understand me? I, I don't want to be anywhere but in his presence. But, you know, sometimes in busy lives, you don't always feel his presence. <laughs> you ever notice that? Sometimes you get, wow, oh, man, you know, wow, what, what am I going to do now? Where's God, all right? <laughs> well, he said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, I'll be with you always, even unto the end, okay? But there's times you know and you feel his presence. And there's other times you've got to just take it by faith that he's there, all right? Now, here's what I want you to see. In John chapter 14, verse 21, the words of Jesus, He that hath my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. This word manifest is in the, in the Greek text, it's E-M-P-H-A-N-I-Z-O. It means to exhibit. It means to uh, appear in form, to show. So to exhibit in person, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ wants to manifest himself to you personally. How is he going to do that? He's going to do it because he, can, he has to do what his word says he'll do. You understand me? He's not a man that he would lie. He will do his word. He is the living word. He that has my commandments, in other words, if you have them, you're going to do them. We've been talking about that tonight. And keeps them. In other words, you keep watch on them and you become a doer of what you're hearing. He it is that loves me, so you're in love with him. And he that loves me shall be loved to my Father. Now say, say this with me. I am totally loved, totally accepted by my Father God. I am totally loved, totally accepted by the Lord Jesus Christ. I am totally filled with the Holy Ghost and the love of God. And I will... Love like he loves. Now, you guys are in trouble now, all right? So I'm just setting you up, okay? <laughs> in a good way, all right? Not bad trouble, all right? In other words, the kingdom of darkness isn't going to like the way you operate, all right? So, in other words, you, got, you can be a lover, but you better be a warrior as well, all right? There's two sides to this thing. He says here, he says, and he will manifest himself to him. Look at verse 23 of John 14. Jesus answered and said unto them, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and the Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our home with him, his residence. You talk about the presence of God. See how important maintaining your love Loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Guys, I encourage you, if, if nothing else tonight, 
I want you to come into a place in your, in your heart of the sensitivity to the leadership of the Holy Spirit by maintaining a romance, a love relationship with Him that's far beyond anything you've ever done before. And guys, I've been married 40 plus years, and marriage is work. To stay in love is work. You understand me? To keep the fire rolling, it's work. And if you think it's not, then you're deceived. In other words, there are things that you're going to have to do and sacrifice to keep the fire hot in your relationship with God Almighty. There are things that you will have to do in self-sacrifice to keep your passion for other people and your love to flow to other people where you will have to deny yourself and lay down your life for somebody else. But when you do that, nothing, nothing, nothing is any greater than walking in that place of His presence in love by the Holy Spirit and being used to be a vehicle or a vessel of the love of God in your lives. Does that make sense to you? Well, let's look at, let's, let's, we'll close here eventually one day. Go to Romans chapter 5. Romans 5, verse 5. And hope makes not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Well, the love of God is where? It's shed abroad in your hearts. By who? By the Holy Spirit. So the love of God and the Holy Spirit are totally united. And where are they united? They're united into your heart. That's why you've got to keep the clutter out of your heart. That's why you can't allow yourself to harbor unforgiveness. He will always lead in the way of love in obedience to his word. The simplicity of being led by the Holy Spirit is to understand this fact. He will always lead you and me in the way of love, in obedience to his word. Now, we have the written word, but in your intimacy with him, that's when God can say things like he said to Kyle, I love you, and you knew it was him. See, it's that same still, small voice that God wants you to become sensitive to as he can direct you, lead you into the life that he's called you to do. And that's a, I believe it's a life of success. For the love of, go, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. What Bibles do you guys have? What versions? Anyone here have an Amplified? Can you? Pull this up in the Amplified. I want you to read it, Joe. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14. The King James says this, For the love of God constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Now, what are you dead to? You're dead to self. And if you don't stay dead to self, self will take over. <laughs> and selfishness will control you. And none of us are exempt from that. But the will of God, the call of God on your life, on my life, on the life of a disciple, the life of one that will follow Jesus Christ, is that his love would constrain us. Now, read that in the Amplified, Joe. It makes so much sense. Well, who is the one that died for all? Love himself. Amen. God is 
low. As he is, so are you. Where at in this world? Not, it's, it's not in the sweet by and by. It's here. It's now. What does this world need? It needs a manifestation of the love of God coming through the church of Jesus Christ that will absolutely flip people's minds. You understand? He's like, wow, why would you do that? Because God loves you and so do I. Amen? Amen. So the love of God, or the love of Christ, controls, it urges, it impels us because we're of this opinion and conviction that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Well, if I'm dead to self, I'm alive unto him, then I can be controlled by his love. It can compel me. Now, let me ask this question. And one of you bold gentlemen, answer it. Have you ever done something and you knew you were out of love and you felt it? <laughs> Have you ever said something to somebody and you, I mean, in your spirit, it was like, oh, why did I do that? I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. Well, I think we can all relate to that, can't we? See, God, the Holy Spirit, wants you to be compelled by love. So to be controlled by the Holy Spirit, to be underneath his leadership, those that are led by the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God are the sons of God. They're mature ones. Mature believers are able to maintain a love walk to be led by the Holy Spirit. And when we're not led by the Holy Spirit, the first thing we usually do is we step outside of love, and when you continually do action after action and do things that you know are not right in your heart, in your spirit, all right, you're, 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 what you're doing is you're grieving the Holy Spirit. You're stepping outside of love, and you're out from underneath his control, and you are being led by your flesh. Does that make sense to you? Now, I know we've all tried it. Now, the key and the goal is for you and me to pull ourselves up by our ears and saying, Bob, that's not your name, but that's mine, all right? Bob, you're going to be a man of love, and you're going to do better tomorrow than you did today. In other words, I'm going to discipline myself to watch my actions, to watch my words, and to and to stay sensitive to my spirit underneath the control of the Holy Spirit because I want to grow in this thing. You understand me? I, I've been doing this for a lot of years, but, man, I haven't arrived. I mean, there's a whole lot further for me to go than I know it is for every one of us. And the more sensitive we come because of a life lived out loud in intimacy with him, and we become so understanding that he wants to control you by love he wants to urge you by love and he wants to take you into the will of God by the love of God that is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Spirit Can you say amen to that in the oh my we've only covered just a short piece here Ephesians 5 2 says and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. We're to be imitators of God according to Ephesians 5 and 1, to follow him, to imitate him. And then we're to walk in love how as Christ did. Do you know that he was controlled? He was impelled? And he was urged because he was love. I want you to find your identity that that's who you are. You're not a selfish man or a selfish woman. That's not who you are. You've been born again. You've been born from above. And the Holy Spirit shed abroad in your hearts the day you asked Jesus to come in there, his love. But you have to give yourself to that love. You have to yield to that love. And you have to resist your flesh who always wants to be selfish. Amen? In 1 John 2, 5, I'll close there, gentlemen. 
1 John 2, 5. But whosoever keepeth his word, this word keep means to obey. It means to guard. A better translation means keep the eye upon. <laughs> keep your eye upon the word of God. How are you going to do that? You can't have your Bible open when you're driving the car. You got to put it into your heart, all right? Keep your spiritual eyes aware of the truths of the Word of God. But whosoever keepeth his word or obey his word, in him is the love of God perfected. You want to perfect your life underneath and controlled by the Holy Spirit, then come to this place. Do the word that you know. Obey the word that you know. You can't do something you don't know. But what you do know, are you doing it? Because if you're not doing it, shame on you. The truths that you know. I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about here. You know when you know something. You know it and you're knower. Is that right, Luke? <laughs> he says here, but whosoever, that means that's every one of us, will keep or obey or to guard his word. In him verily is the love of God perfected, whereby know we that we are in him. To be in him is to walk as he walked. In other words, when Dustin shows up, Jesus just showed up. When he goes serving a table, do you work tomorrow? All right. Those folks are going to be waited on by the Lord Jesus Christ. They might not know it, but that's the way it is. Because why? He, he's, he, God is walking inside of this young man, and he's every one of you. But it's a choice because he could show up to serve that table and say, What y'all want? <laughs> you understand me? <laughs> and get real selfish because he's in a hurry and he wants them to hurry up so he can get somebody else on that table. <laughs> all right? Uh, he's not going to do that. All right? I'm just picking on him. <laughs> but what I want you to see, guys, is it's a choice to walk in love. The same way it's a choice to be intimate with God and to allow his love to throw, flow through you underneath the direction and control of the Holy Spirit. Because that... that that love wants to control you, wants to impel you, and wants to take you into the destiny in which he's called you to. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these students. I thank you, Lord, for this night. And God, I ask you to help each and every one of us continue to maintain, to yield to your love. Father, I ask you to love through us, to work through us, to lead us and to guide us and direct us in all that we do, all that we say, by the love of God that controls us and constrains us. We thank you for that tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.